The rock music world suffered a tragic loss on March 25th with the death of Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins. Hawkins, who was just 50 years old, had been with the band for 25 years and played on some of their biggest hit songs. Hawkins, along with the rest of Foo Fighters, was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2021. According to CNN, the band was scheduled to play a show in Bogota, but it was cancelled and turned into a candlelight vigil following the announcement of Hawkins' death. The band said in a statement posted to Twitter, The Foo Fighters family is devastated by the tragic and untimely loss of our beloved Taylor Hawkins. His musical spirit and infectious laughter will live on with all of us forever. Our hearts go out to his wife, children, and family, and we ask that their privacy be treated with the utmost respect in this unimaginably difficult time. In the days that followed, there was an outpouring of tributes from friends and fellow musicians alike. Queen drummer Roger Taylor, one of Hawkins' heroes, wrote on Instagram, He was a kind, brilliant man and an inspirational mentor to my son Rufus and the best friend one could ever have. Additionally, some close friends revealed the final message they received from the late Foo Fighters drummer. Just a few months before Taylor Hawkins' death, actor John Stamos had lost a good friend with the death of his Full House co-star Bob Saget. Stamos shared his final message from Hawkins by posting it on Twitter. This was Taylor Hawkins' last text to me. Yeah, we've yet to fully have a hang. Got to put that sh together before we die. Wise words from my friend. Put that sh together. I'm so f***ing sad. Another one gone too soon. It's a haunting message given that not long after it was sent, Hawkins died while on tour in South America. However, it was just one of the messages Hawkins sent to those close to him in the days leading up to his death that now carry far more emotional weight than they did when they were first sent. Prior to his death, Hawkins and Foo Fighters were in South America playing a series of festivals. One of those festivals, which tragically turned out to be Hawkins' final performance, was Lollapalooza, Argentina. According to the U.S. Sun, Jane's Addiction frontman Perry Farrell shared the voicemail he received from Hawkins the night before the drummer's death. It was first picked up by Brazilian news outlet Globo One. Take care of each other, and I'll take care of myself, and I'll see you in Sao Paulo. I love, love, love you. Sleep well. Hawkins' reference to Sao Paulo was in regard to Foo Fighters' scheduled headlining appearance at Lollapalooza, Brazil. The band ultimately canceled their performance after Hawkins' passing and Miley Cyrus served as a fill-in. She dedicated her set to the late drummer, saying on stage, I would have done anything to hang out with him one more time, but I know that any time that I get on stage and any time that I get to play with my band, which if anything ever f***ing happened to any one of them, it would f***ing kill me, so I couldn't imagine how the Foo Fighters feel today. Given the nature of Hawkins' final messages to friends, it would seem that his death was a sudden, unexpected occurrence. According to the Daily Mail, several days after his death, a report from investigators was released which indicated that Hawkins' heart was twice the size of those typically found in men his age. Typical male hearts weigh between 300 and 350 grams, whereas Hawkins was found to weigh 600 grams. The report noted that Hawkins had suffered from a cardiovascular collapse. That said, a cardiovascular collapse is a general term. It describes insufficient blood flow for an individual to be able to maintain consciousness caused by heart or vascular damage. While investigators in Columbia continued to search for answers about what led to Hawkins' death, the New York Post reported that the other members of Foo Fighters returned to Los Angeles.